courage to walk with God. Boldness to carry out the things of the faith. And as they've done that, they'll be recognized as good servants. And listen, what is it that you're hoping that Jesus is going to say to you when you get home? I think it starts off with something like, well done now. <coughs> servant. Good and faithful servant. And so there's really not a role in the church that you're supposed to attain to that suddenly grants you a halo or gets you some kind of merit badges or something where all of a sudden you're in a big shot. According to the Word of God, our spiritual giftedness, whether you're a pastor, deacon, teacher, whatever it is, you can't take credit for that. It came from God. It's His. If the Spirit of God chose to cease using you in that way, it'd be over. That's what the Bible says that doesn't happen. Because the things that God gives, He doesn't take back. But we have to understand these things are true. So let's talk very quickly about this. What a deacon is not. Number one, a deacon is not a person who's being honored because they're an older man in the church. Some people think, you know, he's been going to this church a long time. We ought to make him a deacon. Do you see anything in the qualifications of deacon in 1 Timothy chapter 3 that said that? Okay. Number two. He's not a person that has money, popularity, or notoriety in the community and thinks his successes cause him to earn recognition as a deacon. Do you see anything in 1 Timothy chapter 3 that said that that was? Nope. Not there. He's not a person that is nominally involved in the work of the church but instead sees the work of the church as essential and gets involved with God in his church. So this guy is not just, uh, I show up on Sunday morning, I do a little this and that, but I'm not really intricately involved in what is happening at Little Cypress Baptist Church. No. This is a person who sees his church serving Jesus. And wants to be a part of that. Wants to be a part of what God is doing. So what a deacon is, then let's summarize. He's spiritually dignified or reverent. A man of his word, not hypocritical. He's controlled by God and not a desire for substances or to feel a certain way. He's not greedy or covetous. He's committed to the gospel and its ministries without having to lie to himself or others to say so. He's tested in the church and in the community and without reproach. He's faithful in marriage and men who disciple and teach their children and govern their homes well are a part of the people of that role. Now, as you begin to think about that list, Maybe one, maybe two, three, four, five. Men at Little Cypress Baptist Church that you believe God could be called to serve in this role. We don't know exactly how many deacons we're ultimately going to receive in this process. You see, you may believe someone is, God is calling them to serve in this role and we may go talk to them and they may say, uh -uh. God may have sent you that message, but he didn't send it to me. So we don't know. We don't know. But we know that this is what we're looking for. Who is God calling? Who is he raising up for these purposes that we've discussed today? I want to talk about one other thing before we go. And that's the mysteries of the faith. Are you a person who has put your faith and trust in Jesus? And Jesus alone to save you. Not your good works. Not grandma was a great Christian. But you put your own personal life in his hand. You have received him as the substitute for your sin debt. He has given you his righteousness. That you're going to 
miss the lake of fire, that you are going to spend eternity with God because you are trusting in Jesus and you've made that known publicly. You've acknowledged that you put your faith and trust in Him. If you've not done that, you need to do that today. You see, what happens to you for the rest of your life in this world and for all eternity is based on what you do with Jesus. You need to receive Him, confess Him publicly today. Do you remember back at the beginning when we talked about being a church member? Now this is an important thing too. It's an important decision because God calls people to salvation. God calls people to ministry. God calls deacons to service. God calls people to be a part of a local church. You see, He knows what spiritual giftedness you have and if He wants that here in this church. And what kinds of roles He wants you to take. And so if you have this sense that God wants you at Little Cypress Baptist Church, that He's leading you in that way, you need to respond by coming and making that known as well. You see, the Christian faith is wide open. It's not a secret society. It's not a, a hidden thing. Anybody that wants to can walk through those doors. They can come in, they can sit down. They can watch everything we do, hear everything we say, participate in all of it. Up to a point where we acknowledge a person chooses to believe God has called them to be actively involved in this place. They have to make that known. Then we sit down with them and talk to them about our salvation experience and about their salvation experience because the last thing we want is on Judgment Day to see anybody who is a member of Little Cypress Baptist Church be cast into the lake of fire. We want to make sure that as much as we can that everybody that's a part of this church family truly has received Christ. You understand that that's the heart of this church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you need to do some things in our hearts and lives today because we're not perfect yet. And in this time of invitation, we're making the time to just be still before you. Some of us are going to sing, but that's not really necessary. What's necessary is for us to get right. If we belong to you and there's sin in our life, to confess it. If you're calling us to be a part of this church family, for us to respond. If we need to receive Christ, then right now, we would turn our thoughts toward you and we would say, Father in heaven, I need Jesus. I need forgiveness of sin. I am a sinner. And I need someone to save me. Jesus Come into my heart. I receive you. Change me. Make me a child of God. I want to be yours for now and all eternity. Lord, as they sincerely prayed that prayer, that you will give them the boldness, the courage, now that they've responded to be saved, they will come and make it known and follow you publicly in baptism. Lord, someone to be a part of this church family, someone you're calling to ministry. May your will be done in our lives right now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now to make a public decision sometimes for people is very hard. So I just do this from time to time. Because you're thinking it's terrifying to walk up and down this aisle and make a statement. But it's not. Look, I'm doing it. I'm going this way. You don't even get to go this way, right? You didn't go that way. So I'll go that way too. Now, if you wanted to join the church or you give your life to Christ, I would invite you. You could walk with me right now, right in the front, or just fall in behind. Because we're making public decisions. You see, on Judgment Day, Jesus is not going to look over and say, I think that went over there's mine. Let me go ask. It's going to be people who have publicly declared their faith in Christ. And so he's publicly going to declare before the Father. And before God's holy angels, that one is mine. And so if you want him to publicly declare you in heaven, maybe you ought to take a public stand for him today, Your Honor, as we stand. As some people say, you come.
as they come. We'll remind you again about the black folders on all of the rows that you would take that, pass that down, everybody put the information in. Thank you very much. We appreciate you doing that each week. Also, we remind you, if you're on church council, if you're on church council, anybody on church council, it's not committees that meet today, even though that was up on the screen. Today, church council, we're gone. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you this morning. Wonderful day that you've given us today. This opportunity that we have to worship you, to give you praise, and honor, and glory for all that you do and for who you are. And we thank you for this opportunity to hear a message about deacons, Lord, about service in the church. Father, I pray that we all want to serve you in a way that glorifies you, in a way that you have gifted us, Lord, that you serve you, that we choose to do that and do it wholeheartedly. Father, I pray for God this offering, and I thank you for. Uh, what you blessed us with, all the gifts, all the talents, all the resources. Father, that as we give a portion of that back to you, Lord, Father, I pray that that's a representation of, of giving our entire lives to you, Lord, um, each and every day. With all this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We stand together to sing the closing song, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Mm -hmm. 